Great. Um, so welcome committee members, liaisons, and members of the public to the Partnership Grants Committee meeting. Thank you for joining us. We're using Zoom with the goal to foster a more inclusive environment and effective meeting. If you'd like to comment during the meeting, please type I have a comment or I have a question in the chat and a message will be sent to the host. Alternatively, you can use the raise hand feature. In efforts for transparency for all those joining the, meet, the public meeting, whether by phone or Zoom, we request that you refrain from having side conversations on chat about the content of the meeting. Again, the chat feature is utilized simply as a tool for you to virtually indicate that you'd like to speak in order to help the chair facilitate the discussion. Uh, going forward, all trust fund commission and committee meetings will be recorded and posted on the State Bar website. And a friendly reminder that this is a video conference and please be aware of your surroundings behind you. Uh, for those, uh, some troubleshooting tips for those using Zoom on a computer, when on mute, holding down the space bar will temporarily unmute you. If your phone, if you use your phone to dial into this meeting, please be sure your computer's microphone is on mute to avoid audio feedback issues. And then while joining audio via computers, highly recommend it. If an individual loses audio, they can call in separately using the Zoom conference number. Thank you. Can you please take roll? Uh, Christina Vanarelli? Here. Kim Bartelson? Wilba Shelley? Eric Iskin? Here. Chris, uh, Chris Schreiber? Okay. I, I know I saw him. <laughs> He's waving. Here. There I am. Sorry. <laughs> um, Crystal, so um, somebody is M4C. I think that's Wilba Shelley. Let me okay. see if he can unmute. I call that during our sessions. Well, is that you? Yeah, I logged in the wrong account. Sorry about that. <laughs> we Not got you. Problem. Thank you. All right, Judge Askell. Justice Murray. Okay. Mm. For him. Oh. oh, here comes Will back. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's the Will I know. Yes. <laughs> Um, are there, do you take role for staff members as well at this time? Oh, sorry, yes. That's okay. <laughs> um, I'll do the liaisons if any okay. are on the call. Um, Selena Copeland, uh, Bonnie Huff, Melanie Snyder, uh, Christine Ganong, Mark Tony. All right, State Bar staff, Elizabeth Hom. Present. Chris McConkey. Present. Dan Passamanic. Here. Brady Dewar, I don't know if he was joining today's call. All right, all done with the roll call. Okay, thank you, Crystal. At this time, members of the public may speak to any item on the agenda. Are there any members of the public on the call who wish to identify themselves? Okay, hearing none, let's move on to the next item on the agenda, which is approved meeting summary and action items for the January 5th, 2021 meeting. Does anybody have any comments on that item? Okay, would somebody like to make a motion to approve the Meeting summary and action items. That's uh, Eric. It says Jonathan, but it's Eric. <laughs> Is there a second? That's, we know who you are. I'm sorry, was there a second? I didn't hear one. I'll second. This is Chris. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Can we please have a roll call vote? Sure. Uh, Christina Vanarelli? Yes. Um, Kim Bartelson is not here. Uh, Will Bashelli? Yes. Eric Iskin? Yes. Chris Schreiber? Uh, yes. All right, motion passes. Okay, thank you. The next item and what we're here for is to discuss the 2022 <laughs> partnership grant proposals and develop tentative funding recommendations. The staff has been working very hard on this, so I'll turn it over to Crystal. Thank you, Christina. All right, so um, 
So the memo attached for today's meeting kind of outlined some of the um, updates to the review process. Um, and I just wanted to provide a, a quick overview before we looked at the rubrics course. So this um, slide here just has an overview of the timeline um, thus far for the 2022 grant year. On uh, January 29th, the RFP was released and the application um, released on Smart Simple. Um, staff and Judicial Council worked on outreach in February through March. Um, and then that was through the March 18 deadline to submit um, the partnership grant proposals. March through April, as you all know, were the initial calibration and the subsequent um, calibration sessions. And today we'll be meeting to discuss the tentative funding recommendations um, and follow up on any items uh, prior to our June 18th meeting uh, where we'll um, finalize uh, those recommend recommendations and also set aside some time to um, debrief on the, uh, the full uh, review process for this year. Um, just a couple of um, highlights uh, in terms of partnership grant outreach efforts. On February 2nd, um, staff held a webinar for current grantees, potential applicants, and judicial staff from various self-help centers to walk them through the scoring rubric and other application updates for the 2022 year just to prepare them. And um, we also did targeted outreach to QLSPs who serve rural counties, uh, as well as um, uh, those who serve counties not currently funded by partnership grants or were courts had expressed interest in potential partnerships. Uh, this resulted in about 50, over 50 applications initiated, um, though the um, actual application submitted was uh, slightly, um, was lower than that. Um, in terms of the proposals received, um, we received 36 proposals uh, by 26 QLSPs. The total requested amount of funding is 3.094 million. Um, our estimated available funding, which uh, I was able to confirm yesterday is um, 2 million. Uh, 580574. Um, I have a couple of graphs that's, uh, that are also on, on the memo, but I'll, I'll just quickly go over them. The first are the, um, this is just a, a graphical representation of prior years funded um, across those 36 proposals. As you can see, we do have five new proposals and um, to note um, eight, eight of those proposals of the pool um, are, are projects um, over five years. Uh, this is a pie chart as to um, the funding ranges requested. Um, just to call out, you know, majority of, of the proposals are, are in that $91,250,000 request range. Um, and we just have a few um, asking below 49,000. In terms of substantive areas, um, these are the ones that had overlapping or multiple projects that, um, that were um, going to be addressed. Um, housing was the, the most prominent at um, 12, followed by family and domestic violence. These are the other ones in case you can't see, consumer finance, guardianship, um, conserva conservatorship, and income maintenance. Um, these are kind of the one-offs where there was a, a one project that would address this uh, some substantive area and there, there wasn't necessarily overlap, um, juvenile name change and gender, marker change, uh, probate of small estates, um, civil complaints, small debt, small claims debt assistance. Um, just to note, um, the, new, uh, the five new projects who um, have submitted proposals, um, their areas um, fall under, there's two for housing, um, one is a distribution, administration of decedents estates, um, and then the other one is uh, family and domestic uh, violence. In terms of where the funding would cover, this is an, another kind of graph, um, you know, which counties, um, which counties the, the, they would fund, um, just to highlight a majority of the projects um, are, are in Los Angeles with um, nine, and I believe Alameda is a, is a close second, so just to kind of get a context as to where and which courthouses these um, projects um, would be um, located. All right. So just to give a high level overview of the rubric scores before I, I share the larger, um, <laughs> larger spreadsheet, the rubric scores ranged from 54 to 90 points. Um, generally, higher scores were awarded to newer projects, um, continuing projects seeking second or third year funding, as well as strong projects serving um, rural areas. This is generally the, the spread. We had one um, project who scored 90. Um, a lot of them, as you can see, are in that 70 to 79 range. Um, and then we had two projects um, below 60 points. <coughs> um, before we get into the spreadsheet, um, 
you know, the staff wanted to raise a couple of considerations for the committee um, and uh, before we make any tentative funding um, recommendations and um, try to go quickly over this. There's a lot of text in, in this slide. So the first one is um, historically partnership grants have been funded between a range of $20,000 to $100,000. Um, our question is, would the committee consider maintaining this historical funding range for the 2022 grant year? Um, secondly, um, historically, the committee has funded all, all partnership grant proposals, um, considering the total amount requested and estimated funding available. Um, if the committee decides to maintain this approach, this um, would mean, could mean significant reductions in grant amounts for certain projects. Um, and then third, um, third consideration is that the historical approach for funding recommendations has been a tapered decrease over time. Um, uh, for the consideration for the committee, does the committee want to continue this approach or make funding determinations um, on a case-by-case -case basis? Since um, this meeting is slightly different than um, what we had done, um, staff made some recommendations and I'll share that as well uh, in this spreadsheet that I, I feel like I'm just like alluding to, but um, just some highlights um, for this um, uh, and staff recommendations. Um, the first is to maintain a historical funding range, um, but uh, potentially increase the top, the top of that range to 120,000. Um, Next, we'd, um, we'd like to utilize the 2021 award allocations as a starting point, especially for the continuing projects as, as that has historically been the starting point um, that the committee has made recommendations. Um, third is uh, tapered funding for continuing projects and increments of 5%. Um, this is more of a systematic approach um, that we felt could be potentially equitable um, considering you know, second, third, uh, fourth year projects, et cetera. Um, fourth would be utilizing um, the 70 points mark as a threshold score to determine larger or smaller deductions. And then uh, finally, um, you know, the largest deductions or potentially no funding would be for the lowest scoring projects um, or projects with the lowest funding priorities. So I'll pause here to see if there are any questions or um, does everyone just, just want to see the, the larger spreadsheet? Yeah. I had a related question that might fit here and, and you can tell me if it should go later. Sure. Um, so this is a, a question related to the instructions and on some of the items such as office supplies or technology, uh, they have a they list a limit in the instructions. So equipment purchases under $1,000 for office supplies or technology under $1,000. And I noted that some of our applicants didn't seem to abide those instructions um, and, or, or like space that, you know, it shouldn't be paying for funds for uh, renting the court space. And I don't think this will have a major impact on us reaching our, our goal of bringing those two numbers together. But I am curious whether staff checks those instructions off and, and make sure that they have complied. And then if they haven't complied, what our uh, historical response has been. Because some of the projects, you know, could, could ask for a lot more and other projects that abided the instructions might not have asked for what they needed. And I'm not sure that it'll have any major impact, but I am curious um, what's been done in the past and what is currently done on the staff side. Yeah, so well, in terms of the $1,000 technology cap, I, I, I did ask Dana about it and we checked our policy. So that that amount actually isn't, isn't uh, isn't referenced in the um, policy. I, I believe that budget, um, that budget language might have been carried over from, I don't know if there's a, an AL to EF grant, Elizabeth, you can chime in too as to where that amount came from. You know, given some of the models um, proposed for this year, I think part of SAS recommendation is a more flexible approach, especially with larger technology um, budget line items. Um, I would just add is I don't think um, that we're constrained by um, the statute or um, uh, the understanding from the, with the judicial council on the on that cap. I think that may have been maybe like a, a historical kind of uh, rollover from past applications because I think um, you know a cap of a thousand dollars on technology, uh, given you know the pandemic and our remote environment, would be difficult. For example. So um, 
you know, we, and I think to answer your other question, well, you know, we do, uh, staff does follow up with all the applicants to make sure that, you know, what they're providing in the applications is uh, responsive to the questions. Um, and I think uh, in many of the working groups, those items were flagged and, and staff has um, followed up as appropriate. Okay, uh, that's fantastic. And I, I tend to agree with that where I, I guess I would strongly advise change because I'm a person who tends to follow instructions. Mm -hmm. I would have read that and said, okay, well, we can only ask for $1,000 for technology and for office supplies and for these other items. So I don't wanna penalize people in the future. And I hope we can make sure that, that uh, the instructions match our actual expectations. I, I think that this may have to do with um, capitalism, uh, expenses that can be capitalized and the idea that um, any particular technology expense that's over $1,000 should be a capital expense or something along those lines. That's probably an outmoded number. That number should be higher now. Um, but um, it's not that they shouldn't spend the money, but that if they're gonna spend it, at this point, it's an investment and that would be a per unit item. So if they need to get five laptops and they're $700 each, that could go there. Right, I, I didn't wanna to get too far into the minutia, but in terms of evaluating our applicants today, I wanted to make sure that I understood the expectations and that we are clear going forward so that uh, people ask for what they need. Thanks. Great, thank I, have, you. I have a question, Crystal. Mm -hmm. um, back to your recommendations. Staff recommendations. I have two, two questions about those. Can you explain the 5% tapering recommendation? I'm not sure I understand yeah, how that so would work. And then that's one question. And the other mm -hmm. one is, the threshold of 70. I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. Yeah. Yeah. Those two things? Yeah. So the best way I think to to show that is, is in this this larger spreadsheet, which I I'll, I'll share my screen now. Um, just a warning, there's a lot of columns. So I, I hope everyone's screens are, are large enough to, to take a look. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so um, I'll walk through the spreadsheet first, and then um, Eric, I'll, I'll respond to your, your questions as well to see to show you like where that was, um, you know how how we did the, the tapering uh, on the staff recommendations. And so you know, just starting out from the top, you have the total amount requested, the total amount available, that two two five eight zero five seven four number, and the twenty twenty one award just for reference. Um, organization, project title, column after um, years funded. I have a high level um, results from the rubric scores from those main categories. Um, I've also included the total project budget um, as indicated on the application and, and what percent of the partnership grant funds um, would rely on um, to support that project. Um, this next column is a total amount requested and then the 2021 award allocation um, is here as well for what we had um, awarded projects um, last year. Um, funding recommendation, staff funding recommendations are in orange, and then this is the difference between um, between the award allocations and um, what staff is recommending um, in, in this column here. Um, so let me see. So currently, as this spreadsheet is sorted, it's sorted by um, the highest scoring proposal to the lowest scoring proposal. Um, but in order to do the tapering, um, we actually, I resorted it again by years funded and you can maybe see a little bit more um, organized with how, how the, how the, um, how we went about it. So starting off with the um, new seed projects, they're all, all of these, the new projects scored 70 or more. So the staff recommendation is to um, fully fund the projects where, um, where we, um, Fully fund those projects, and then projects that requested beyond 120,000, we would um, sort of keep within that range. Not, not so to speak, like a cap, but just you know, that's our maximum funding range that the committee is agreeable to. That would be the most um, we would be awarding, like Bethetic, for example, um, and and CRLA. So that's our first, the initial um, for new new projects. And then moving down, these are all uh, first year projects seeking, seeking second year funding. Um, we looked at the scorings here 
So our thought was if they scored 70 or higher, um, they would get very much close to what we awarded them last year. And um, because we did the haircut, um, I think the staff reasoning was we'll just kind of round up to the, that nearest um, thousand, which puts everyone about 2% more than what they were granted. You know, fairly new project, um, very high funding priority scores at fives and fours. Um, and there was one project, let me take a look. Um, and then county legal services, although they're um, a second year project, they did score a 66. So we wanted the rubric to be responsive um, in terms of grant funding amount. So uh, our, our um, recommendation therefore would be to, to cut 5% um, from what we had awarded them in 2021. That um, was a second year project? This was a second year project for Inland County Legal Services. And you, know, you can also see here, funding priority was listed as a, a three. So um, we kind of made a subset for each of the years funded, whether or not they were above 70 or below 70, and then made increments. So second year project seeking third year funding, you know, 5% cut. If we were below that 60 um, point or 70 point threshold, it'd be a 10% cut. And that's how we kind of went about it for each each groups um, each groups according each group according to their uh, prior years funded. Right, so, um, so the cuts were from, the cuts were from last year's funding amount. Yeah, last year's oh, right. funding amount as opposed to the requested amount because we find that a lot of projects they request the same amounts year after year, and um, generally the committee has has utilized what they had um, funded them the prior year as as kind of the baseline or, or starting point. Um, it, go ahead, Eric. Did you have a question? Uh, okay, so I, I think I understand your your thinking on on the tapering. Well, what what did you do like with the project that give me like an eight year project or something? You know, a plus. Yeah. So our oldest um, projects are court in, in this pool as um, legal assistance for seniors. Um, I think they're seeking eleventh year funding. Um, so I recommend, and they scored a, a 62, and so below, because they're below 70 points, our recommendation was a 25% a um, cut, just kind of going down those 5% increments. And then public council, um, they scored a 69, so similarly, it'd be a 25% cut. Um, in addition, you know, as you can see, public council, um, you know, 15% per, um, is, would be for the partnership grant fund, so they're well, they're also well funded. Um, I did just want to flag uh, as well for the committee's consideration, um, let me see this one, legal services in um, Northern California, um, they, they are, they are a, a, a five, they're an elder than five year project, um, and um, they scored a 79, which is mean they're, they're over that 70 um, point threshold, um, but instead of um, kind of going in line of the proposed um, reductions, um, staff recommendation would be to um, potentially just fund them the same amount we, they were given last year, considering the, the county served. So that was the, we had that as that as an exception. Um, and then we did want to also flag, you know, these two lowest scoring projects, which were um, California, Central California Legal Services and Riverside Legal Aid, who both scored under 60. And so um, they're both older than five years. And then so the staff recommendation was potentially the largest cut, which is 30%. And if funding, we had worked with um, a, a smaller funding number when um, staff did this exercise. So um, it was potentially um, not fund them would be another recommendation as well. Just given um, given the low scoring, um, you know, fairly low funding priority, um, if, if worst case to, came to worse, that, that would have been the staff recommendation. But as you can see here with these numbers and the proposals, we're actually at an eighty-four thousand. We still have eighty-four thousand dollars to um, to distribute. So I'll, I'll pause here. I know that was a lot of math and a lot of calculating. I just want to make sure it made made sense to the committee. Be this is the first time you're probably implementing a more a more systematic approach. Um, but I, I we just wanted to draw relations with how the rubric scores played into. Um, <clears throat> How, the, how to incorporate the rubric scores, um, years funded, um, into kind of what the overall distribution could look like. So these are these are proposed numbers. Any um, thoughts or? Oh, sorry. oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, 
Oh, no, no. I, just, I was just asking if there are any comments. And so, Eric, you're welcome to, to share your. Yeah, so just, so just the total that you, total that you provisionally uh, recommend. I know we're not bound by this at all, but are you saying that you underspent or you overspent? We underspent. So okay. um, if the committee is, is happy with this as a starting point, um, I think staff's next recommendations would be maybe sorting by subject area, substantive area or county served. If you want to put more money in certain projects, you know, given if they're rural, if they're going to cover um, a substantive area that might have increased need in 2022. Um, we just wanted to make sure like that overall, that underlying structure of the tapered approach, um, if the committee was in agreement of it or, or had any thoughts as to what th that could look like. Um, I also did want to call out, I know um, during the review team sessions, um, one question that I had informally asked each of the review teams was, you know, what would we like to do in um, the instance if there's a standoff scoring? Um, and, and so the, so the majority had, had indicated, you know, taking the average of three scores would be the two committee members and staffs. And so those are just reflected in um, these scores that have one decimal point. Um, but in the overall spread, I'm not sure if that would if it substance, sub, substantively affect impacted their score. I think one call out would just be Family Violence Law Center. They're, they're fairly close to the 70 points. So I don't know if that would be another point of um, consideration for the committee. All right, um, so I'm thinking maybe if we can start by the new projects and maybe go down chunk by chunk, is that, is that, does that work, Christina, or? Yeah, I was gonna say may, maybe sort by funding priority and look at that first. Yeah, I'll do largest to smallest. Cause that'll, that's where the rural category and the number of years comes into play, right? Uh, yes. Okay. So funding priority, um, you know, I think just not surprisingly, the very newer projects, they're all at yeah. the fours or the fives. Um, Crystal, can I just ask um, if you might freeze the, the column headers there so we can keep those in mind? Yeah, um, I have these frozen right now, but let me, let me, let me I was just that. hoping to be able to see them when, when scrolling down there. I, I don't know if Excel lets you freeze panes when you are using this sorting um, option. Oh, right. You know, I've, I've, I've struggled with this. <laughs> she already sorted it, so now she can freeze it. Yeah. Oh, there, oh great, great. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I have a little menu bar for my sharing my screen. Let me just move that out of the way, too. Would it be more? Um, would it be better to start with like the those with the top funding parities or or the bottoms just to kind of see? I think the top. Okay. Yeah. So SELS, that's a new project. So our recommendation is to to fully fund them for yeah. their asked amount. Um, Bethetic is also at a twenty or uh, at five points, um, capping them up or um, having the range be at one twenty, and that would be the maximum. Um, that's that again, they're 120, so that would be fully funding that project. Um, CRLA is at 137, so um, instilling that 120 um, maximum. Well, well, um, can you, uh, we can't, oh wait, maybe it's just me. Can anybody see the recommendation? There. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 120, and then Compton Self Help, um, also uh -huh. new project. Uh, Funding uh, priority of five, um, we're also recommending to uh, fully fund that. Th so those five projects, I think more or less will be funded or kind of kept to the top of the funding range. So there's one here, 55,000 recommendations, $74,000 ask. I have to go across to see what this is. Imperial County unlawful detainer. And I think um, also they're a, you know, they're a, 
they're an older than five year project, but they are in Imperial County, which is a rural mm -hmm. county. So uh, I guess this would be kind of a, a pause point to see if the committee would like to maybe increase their award amount um, with that consideration. I think we should. Because it's, it's a decrease by 20% is what it says in the next column, column, right, from the year before? Yeah, just mostly because of years funded. Mm -hmm. But again, we can we can make that decrease smaller. Could I just maybe get some numbers on the board for maybe the new projects? Is the committee in agreement with, with the staff recommendations of kind of carrying these amounts forward, fully funding, and then keeping at that 120 cap if or 120 top of the range? Would that be OK? Which, which ones? The top <laughs> spreadsheet yeah, just, is gnarly. <laughs> just these, these, these projects, the um, new, new projects. Um, okay. Does the committee agree with those maybe initial staff, the staff recommendations and just carrying those over so we can move on to see where we can add some monies to? Yeah. What, what was the remote pro se technology initiative? Um, who, who is that organization? That's Zedek. Okay. So just to be clear, this is sorted by the rubric score and then funding priority. Is that right? Currently, it's just it's just funding priority. We're doing it like one line at a time. It's oh, not a multi-sort. Oh, yeah. So, um, oh, well, it matches fairly much the same, I guess, but not exact. Okay. I mean, these numbers seem like a, a good uh, starting point to me. Yeah, those are, seems like a no brainer to me. And then the only one that's not fully funded is the one that asked for more than 120, right? Correct, it'd be um, the Bedzetic and so yeah. we're pretty confident they probably can find yes. um, alternate funding. Yes. <laughs> okay, and then I think we're talking about um, Elder Law and Advocacy, is that the one we wanted to talk about next? Or maybe San Luis Obispo? Um, for the most part, um, San Luis Obispo um, and Legal Aid of Marin, um, I think for our, the staff recommendation is just to fund them very similar to what they were given last year at 100,000 and 80,000. Um, any, does anyone, does anyone in the committee wanna maybe increase that or we'll just keep that as uh, very similar to what they got last year? Well, this one, San Luis Obispo County scored very high. Yes. And they asked for 115 and that's rural. So I wouldn't be opposed to giving them more. Yeah, we, we can, we can, we have 80, um, 80 something thousand. So we, we could be able, uh, we can make it be judicious in terms of where to increase um would that be like an increase to like 105 yeah or... that's what i was thinking great so they'll be they'll always see seven seven percent more than um what they got in 2021 um the next project is legal aid of marin um their ask was 80 i think it's it's very similar um which is their original ask i'm going to carry over that eighty thousand. great all right, so back to the YOLO Consumer Clinic. Um, their ask is 67. They were granted 62 um, last year. Um, staff um, recommendation was to, you know, match that amount, um, or we can meet their ask amount at 67, taking into account that's the only program in YOLO County. Is the committee okay with that? So Elder Law and Advocacy is Imperial County and Lawful Detainer Clinic. That's Imperial County. Um, their request is 74 and then staff recommendation was um, 55, you know, just taking into consideration the tapering. Um, but uh, does the committee feel strongly to increase this amount considering that the 98% um, relies on, on the budget and they're fairly high in terms of uh, funding priority um, just because Imperial County is also rural. Are they the only program in Imperial mm -hmm. County? Yes. 
They actually work together with CRLA. They share an office, and I believe, if not this year, at least in years past, they've kind of worked uh, with CRLA staff to, to deliver these services. But between the two of them, they are the only game in town, and they leverage each other. Um, 70,000 would be very much, very close to what they got in 2021. Um, but I don't know if that, do, do we want to put that number in for now and then maybe revisit or. I think that's a good starting point. Yeah, I'm sorry. I've been talking and been muted all, the whole oh, time. Oh, right. This is Mary. <laughs> it's not Whoa. your fault. We're not ignoring you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's start with 71. Thank you. 71? Yeah. All right, um, this is, these are the three NLS projects, Pasadena Continuum, um, Stabilizing Families in Chatsworth, their, um, the staff recommendation because their um, seeking second year partnership grant funding was to match their amounts. Um, does the committee feel strongly to increase these amounts or um, carry them forward um, as part of the, the committee's tentative funding? So on the Chatsworth technology, um, I think that was our working group and they were at a 70. So Dan, uh, are you there? Remind me, didn't we have some issues with that one? Uh, well, we had issues with all three of them. We were them. concerned about <laughs> whether they really had innovative technology. Um, I, I think that's um, accurate. Uh, they did respond to our questions uh, and report that they are working on innovative technology, but What's really happening here is that um, NLS has large hubs providing a range of self-help services in these different locations. And the different locations have a, a focus. So Chatsworth has a consumer law focus and they're gonna try to bring in technology, but it hasn't actually happened yet. Um, uh, Pasadena has a focus on uh, UD, but they do plenty of family law too. Um, and it's not as, as tightly focused as maybe the uh, proposals indicate. That being said, these are um, sort of institutional, high volume, high quality projects that have been part of the court's you know, service structure uh, <clears throat> for 25 years. They, they are definitely the the organization that works most closely with the LA Unified with, with the LA Superior Court um, to make sure self-help services are delivered across the board and in particularly at these locations. So um, yeah, the technology piece is, is maybe aspirational, but they, they do their best to provide technology, uh, to uh, provide consumer law assistance there. And um, this project and also Pasadena are, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with these. We've actually funded them in the past. They're, they're back for a second round now. NLS is good at that, <laughs> repackaging. Mm -hmm. uh, the guardianship project is, I think, truly a, a, a new effort. It is um, trying to bring services up into that Antelope Valley region, which is, mm. I, I, I lived in the Valley. I didn't realize that um, uh, Van Nuys to um, Antelope Valley is 60 miles. And to mosque, it's 16. Uh, that's a lot of territory. So um, I'm, I'm really glad to see that that stabilizing families, families piece has been added. Yeah, the other two, right. yeah, it's not, uh, it's not like this is anything really new, but it's not like there's anything wrong with it either. I mean, I would go to <laughs> recommendations were fine to me. Great, so I'll carry those over for now. Hey, Crystal, can I just make it just for, for, for uh, putting a pin on comments, you know, you, you said that we're going to devote the next meeting to lessons learned. I, I just want to make a comment that I've made before, and I'm a broken record on this, but uh, the chart in the, um, in the application that lists services rendered yes. and the number of people served, mm -hmm. um, I just wish we could work on that because I, I find that really hard to read. Yeah. It doesn't really communicate anything to me. I can't tell from reading that chart. 
what they're doing exactly, how many people they're serving. The numbers seem duplicative and overlapping and just very mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. And we were definitely noting that too. And I think we need to work with judicial counsel. It's, it's part of the evaluation just to see how we'll um, reword it to make it clear, I think, for the committee and um, applicants as well. But thank you. I'll, I'll note that. Um, okay, great. Um, so we're now at funding priority fours, which are which are fairly high as well. Um, so I think they kind of they're in line with a lot of the second year projects. So I'm gonna just take a peek here. San Diego Volunteer Lawyers Program, their central division restraining orders. <coughs> we had 5% um, cuts as a recommended um, for the staff recommendation for these projects, you know, that, that scored over 70 points. So can I ask a question mm -hmm. um, about the LAFLA project? I noticed that they include expungements. Did staff follow up with them that that, that, that should be excluded? Yeah, I'm, I'm following up with them. Um, and I, 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 I will uh, provide the working group an update, but I, I, I think they'll be fine because they do cover some other substantive areas, um, but it'll be part of the follow-up after the meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Is the community okay with the staff recommendations for you know a minus five percent? They're seeking third year funding um, and you know fairly strong projects all over seventy points at least um, through the these chunks um, these projects here um, Central Division Restraining Order Poor and Self Help Center um, the Tulare County um, and then the de facto and adoptive parent assistance project. These are all with the funding priority of um, four. So 16? Yes. Yeah. What about the one that want, asked for 71,000 and the recommendation is 35.5? Shriver, Sash, self help? That is JDC. Um, Justice and Diversity Center. Um, so they're actually a third year program seeking um, fourth year funding. And so the re staff recommendation was actually based on what they were awarded um, last year, which was um, 39,000. Um, I think primarily um, it's also because, you know, 14% of the fund, like they're very um, um, low funded money. program. Um, so just revisiting those second year projects or second year projects seeking third year funding with a strong priority. Does the committee in agreement that a, a 5% cut we can, um, should I carry over staff's recommendations for now? Um, or are there any projects we want to maybe increase funding to um, looking at it? <laughs> um, the Tulare County Unlawful Detainer Workshop, this is because it's a third year program, that's why we wanted to drop to, is that 65? Yes, yeah. 65, they were granted 68 last year. So it would be a 5% decrease for that. Um, but again, I think that that might be one of the few projects in two air. So the committee wishes to increase that amount, um, that's fine. I might suggest we at least give them what we gave last year or around that. That um, 70,000 sound okay? Okay. Trying to read them, yeah. yeah. And then am I okay to carry over this central division restraining order clinic, um, the staff recommendation amount over of 80, 84,000? Um, and then this is San Diego and that would be at the 93,000. <clears throat> Um, so Public Law Center has a de facto and adoptive parent assistance project. Um, they scored pretty high, um, pretty well at 75. And then again, that would be in line with that 5% decrease for projects seeking third year funding. Um, my Kata carryover staff's recommendation of that 40, 46,500 um, allocation.
Um, the next, there's a couple of projects. Um, hmm. So these all had high funding um, high funding priorities at four points. Um, there's a couple of um, third year and fourth year projects. Um, you know, our, our increases were, our decreases were again recommended due to years funded, but do you wanna take that in consideration that they did have higher funding priorities and um, fund them a bit more, uh, higher than the staff recommendation? Um, I'll start with um, LACPA's Domestic Violence Legal Services Project. Um, you know, their ask is 99 and the staff recommendation was, um, 80,000, um, which would only be a 10% decrease from what they were awarded last year. Um, does the community feel strongly in, in terms of, you know, keeping this recommendation or potentially increasing it given their higher funding priority? Can I clarify something? Mm -hmm. is, the funding priority is the, is, is that that's what grew out of each group or is that what staff recommend? No, this, these are pulled each from the calibration session. So if the, um, it was the, the review teams calibrated uh, funding priority. So the one through five, and then this was just multiplied by four. I mean, the recommendation on that one seems okay to me. It's okay to me too. Okay, great. Um, $80,000. And then this one was the JDC Cyber Sash. Um, uh, very similar to what we got. It is it is a, a larger decrease, but again, we I think we pointed out you know fourteen percent funds uh, of partnership grant fund, funds is, would fund this project. So um, is the community okay with the thirty five five hundred yeah. um, proposal? Okay. All right. Next is Orange County Consumer Debt. Um, this is a project seeking fifth year funding. Um, let me just highlight it here. Fifth year funding. Um, their ask is, is actually not, it's 29,000, um, but we just wanted to try to be consistent. They did score 70. So um, our recommendation was to um, maybe do a 15% cut, um, but I don't know if the committee may wanna, may wanna increase that amount just because their ask amount also is, is a, a little bit, much smaller than some other projects. I'd be comfortable with a, a higher amount on that. Yeah, so, so their ask is 29,000. We gave them about 23,000 last year. Um, would it be, uh, does the want to have? Start there. 23? Yeah. Great. I'm sorry, that amount was 23? 23,000, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, next is um, Central California Legal Services, Tenant Landlord Housing Project. Um, they are seeking um, seventh year funding. Um, they're in Fresno, um, but again, uh, the staff recommendation was to uh, potentially, de um, pot potentially decrease their funding by 25% in comparison to their prior year. Um, I don't know if the committee feels strongly, um, given some rural considerations and a fairly high funding priority to increase that amount. Um, I mean, we could. I I had the. I remember this one, <laughs> um, and my concern was that they didn't. It didn't seem like they did anything last year, and that it seems to be run by a paralegal without supervision. And I was concerned about that. I know they responded back saying that it, an attorney does review everything, so yeah, they have a very tiny amount in their budget for the attorney, but. I think, Dan, don't you know about this one, how they're doing it? Well, you know, my, my, my information isn't current, mm -hmm. but it probably hasn't changed much since I yeah. learned about it. Um, there is a, a person on their staff who is a paralegal, who is their, I think, team leader for family law or, or something along those lines. Uh, an extremely highly skilled, highly trained professional who happens not to be an attorney, but kind of does the trainings for the attorneys at the at the program 
she does have a little piece of attorney supervision, but um, that's essentially to placate us. And um, the um, I, I don't know how much work the project actually does. It's just sort of um, part of their budget that we help them do some of their self help services. I do know that um, it's a perennial challenge to get traction in these counties. Uh, they've put a lot of energy into trying to get different things to work, get people to show up at stuff. Um, it's always been uphill sledding for them. Well, Dan, this is a six year project. Mm -hmm. um, they must have evaluations. What do they look like? Yeah, so I, I, can I just interject? Um, just in terms of evaluations, uh, what we'll talk about in the June meeting too, is I'm gonna give an overview of the evaluations <laughs> across the board, but generally, um, all projects um, and uh, under deliver uh, the, were not able to meet their service goals primarily due to the courthouse closures. So I, mean, I think it's kind of a hard, um, it'd be difficult to maybe utilize um, evaluation uh, as a strong determining factor, like especially for this grant year. Um, so I'm go ahead, Dan, but I, I just wanted to- Yeah, but, this. Yeah, but, but, but I'm, I'm not talking about that. Yeah. Historically? But I no, I get that. Now, 2020 was was a was an aberrant year, but we have six years of history with this project. Do, do they have evaluations going back, you know, before that? Uh, it's not terribly robust. Uh, I, I, would have just to say, I have to program. interject, Dan. Sorry, yeah. Dan, but I think um, overall evaluations aren't terribly robust. So I think yeah. it's yeah. a little unfair to um, to say that for this particular project, because no, we looked at no, no, no. everybody's evaluations, overall, the evaluations aren't very strong. Very strong. Oh. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I think Melanie I might want to say something, but. <laughs> Hang on. Melanie, you might need to mute either your computer or your phone. I guess while uh, Melanie's working. <laughs> uh, She's having trouble with her Zoom connection, so I think she'll well, she'll comment when she can figure that out. Um, I'm I'm just curious if. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Go ahead, Melanie. No. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Did I leave? Oh, you can hear me. Okay, great. Um, what I was going to say is that we noticed the issue with evaluations on several of the um, of the reports that we read uh, as well. Um, and what we were going to talk to you about maybe separately is perhaps putting together a presentation for all of the panelists that, you know, for all the uh, participants at some point um, about evaluations and about how to do them and such, because a, a lot of them are are lacking, and I don't think it's their fault. I, I just think evaluations is sort of a, a newfangled thing uh, that people are really looking more at and, and data collection, there's whole new methods. Um, and I just don't know that people are that versed in how to properly evaluate. So we were gonna, again, um, talk to you about putting together something so that we can help the programs to do a more robust evaluation. Uh, in yeah. the future. That's a great idea. Incredibly <clears throat> valuable. We actually did something like that in 2005. So it's probably due. <laughs> so going, going back to just there, I mean, given, given that and, you know, understanding of kind of our, our evaluation data that, you know, we're, we're going to work on it and try to improve in terms of what we get back from applicants and making that a little bit more clear um, in terms of their funding for 2022, um, as proposed, staff is recommending a 25% decrease primarily um, because it is an, an older project. Um, but, you know, also with the understanding it, it is in Fresno and there's not a lot of projects currently uh, funded by the, by this grant there. 
does the committee want to keep this staff recommendation um, or potentially increase um, increase their award? Yeah, they they had a fours across the board, correct? As far as funding priority, they're at a four. Yes. So yeah, I, um, I'm not sure where we are at on our total amounts, but I'd be disinclined to cut them 25 percent. Maybe maybe some cut is in order or closer to their. 2020. Christina, did you review this project? Yeah, I know it. I think I I got this one confused with the other one from CCLS. Did they have they have three? So which is the one with the paralegal? <laughs> I don't think that's this one. It might be the. Um, it's the guardianship. guardianship. Okay, so everything I said, put it in a box, and when we get to the guardianship one, <laughs> sorry. I'm gonna just put a number here to see, like maybe sixty thousand, and see what kind of decrease that would be. So that's a thirteen percent cut, or thirteen percent decrease from what they were awarded um, in twenty twenty one. Is the committee comfortable with that? And maybe we can revisit if we're, we're still under budget. Yeah, what was the that? number there? Sixty thousand. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, this one was better than the other one. So I had two. Yeah, there's, yeah, you can see that. There. I remember so now. I think we're like towards the halfway point. Um, we're at one one six four six so far. I think we're we're doing well. Um, so let's let's carry on to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> carry on to the next one. Um, Consumer Rights Clinic. Um, Inland County Legal Services. Their funding priority. We're at the threes now. So they're actually seeking second year funding. Um, but um, I think their total score was was a bit lower. Um, I think according to the staff recommendations, um, we thought this would uh, warrant maybe a 5% um, decrease from what they were awarded um, last year. So that would bring them at 88,000 um, and they were awarded 92 um, in 2021. This was review team three. I don't know if um, uh, Chris, um, Judge Jaskol, Chris, uh, Chris McConkey, if you have any thoughts on, on this per uh, specific particular project or thoughts on the staff recommendation. Uh, I don't want to talk before Judge Jaskol or Christian if they, I can, I can um, tell you what I remember from our conversation. Um, this one was um, the one that, it was a project that uses um, proposed software that a different grant will be paying for, that the client will sit down and fill out the software for um, their consumer um, matter, and the software will help them generate court forms um, and settlement letters. And then an ICLS attorney would look over the software generated um, uh, legal document with them. So the ICLS attorney kind of comes in a little bit later in the process, but they're still overseeing it. Um, I th I, our team was um, took note that it meets only, I think it meets only one day per week. Um, it was kind of modest in its targets. It, it was sort of in line with our the other applications our team reviewed as far as how many clients and workshops it's gonna do, but it was the low end. Um, and we sort of thought that the software piece might be a way to try and reach more people, but we noted that it was a little less hands-on. Um, that was what I remember from ICLSs. Is this like debt, debt collection kind of stuff? Debt collection cases? Is that what we're mm -hmm. dealing with? Yeah, low-income consumer debtors. It seems yeah. like a bunch of, pro like the project we looked at in the Valley in Chatsworth was like doing the same thing. I just wonder how many people are... <laughs> So I, 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 I did ask the, the, the Chatsworth project about this, and they said that they were in communication with the people at UC Irvine who are doing the ICLS project and tracking their progress to see if it'll work in Los Angeles and we'll adopt it if it does and we'll come up with something new if it doesn't which makes me think that they aren't very far along on their tech track right now, but that nobody's reinventing too many wheels because they're still watching the first one being built. Well, 
it's not clear that yeah it's not clear i i think out of our agree our group it wasn't clear from the application that they were actually utilizing the software i don't think it exists yet right so I, yeah i mean just by way of disclosure as crystal knows um but basically we judge jasko and i just gave everybody threes for funding priorities <laughs> so because you know we don't i mean with uh, maybe with one or two exceptions i guess but we just sort of went down the middle because we didn't know that it was a way to like we didn't really feel at least i'll, I'll speak for myself it's hard to know what the funding priority is when you haven't had a chance to sort of meet to find out what everybody else's projects involve. Um, so, I mean, the, seeing how, how many are eight is just interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of th this project sort of graded up because of where they're doing it, because it, it's in a less served area of the state. So should we go with the staff recommendation, Chris, or are you thinking a little bit more? Well, I think I'd just go with the staff recommendation here. Um, I guess my inclination was to say like, well, it might even be less, but um, it seems like, you know, people are going to, these pro the programs are going to largely get what they need. Um, we're closing the gap pretty quickly, so. I go with staff recommendation on that. Did, were they able to implement the program at all? Did we get any evaluations back for last year? I think this is going to be for ICLS. This is going to be their second year of funding. So and their first year was during the pandemic. Yeah, their evaluation inf information won't be available till the end of um, this this year. They're doing it now for the first year. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. So I carried over that 88,000 amount. Um, also, um, I think these next chunk of um, uh, pro projects are seeking third year funding with a funding priority of three. Um, and I think two of these projects, sorry, trying to <laughs> Legal Access Alameda and then Legal Aid Foundation of Santa Barbara County, they both scored um, 70, funding priority three. Um, the staff recommendation was uh, similarly a 5%. Um, a 5% cut from what they were awarded um, last year. Does that, seem, does that seem okay? Okay. The Santa Barbara one, I, I uh, assume they're just serving that many more people. So that seems on the high end for compared to other conservatorship and domestic violence yeah they're 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 basically um i think if not the only qlsp in that county and they're in three um three courthouses uh, as part of uh, wow. and really in close partnership with with the court there so only like i think this funds one attorney and a paralegal uh, or another position um but they do have that's basic that's <laughs> it's them who, who provides um uh um self-help services uh in in the county so they do a lot, a lot of practice areas and a lot of people in a, what, all, all three courthouses? Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, all right, so the next is partner partnership to assist limited conservatorship litigants. Um, this is legal assistance for seniors. Um, you know, I think staff is, they're seeking third year funding and staff is recommend, recommending a 10% cut um, primarily because they did score under 70 points, um, but uh, definitely up to the committee if you wanna maybe um, increase their award uh, amount or if this, is, if this is okay to carry over. Where in Alameda County are they? Um, this is a clinic that works with three different courthouses. The actual hearings are in Berkeley, but they provide services at self-help counters in Hayward and um, Oakland as well. Okay. 
then I think I would consider raising it a little bit. Uh, any amount of mine, 60,000? Yeah. Okay. I think so. Great. Um, so next is LESSD's um, name change and gender marker change self-help clinic. Um, they were funding priority three. They're seeking fourth year funding. Um, they scored a 70. And I guess because they're um, requesting fourth year funding using that tapered approach, staff recommendation was um, a 10% decrease from what they were awarded last year. But again, um, I think we do have some leeway. So <laughs> if the committee wants to award any additional um, monies, uh, I think we have some flexibility in, in these last row of um, projects. Did, did they change the name of the project? Gender marker wasn't what it originally right. said, but that's it's what not, I was just Googling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, uh, it, it's a different name, but it's, it's not a different project. I mean, did they change they changed that from when from when our commission from when our subcommittee reviewed the the application. <laughs> was was it? Oh. Well, because I, like the debate, the discussion, not debate that we had in our in our meeting was that you know that if anything that this is a project that could have scored more highly on innovation um, because they could be sort of meeting the moment on so many of the trans rights issues that are sort of emerging and that they really didn't do that in their application material, both in terms of how they described what they were doing, but also in terms of the project itself was just very traditional sort of name change stuff um, without any real discussion about outreach or implication, et cetera, et cetera. So it's sort of interesting, um, I guess. I, I don't know if something changed while we were. <laughs> I, have it, I have in my notes um, on our, um, our review team scoring spreadsheet, the same name that we have on here. If, if I don't, I don't. <laughs> dispute that you saw it written differently somewhere else just that I, I know last year it had a different name but I can pull up their application to see what it, what they submitted I'm, I'm looking at my stack currently um but does um, that impact or you know ha want the committee to potentially maybe increase um increase the the staff um from the staff recommendation that we're um, I think who, are they? Who, who is the who's the organization that's, that's uh LASSC, Legal Aid Society of San Diego. Mm -hmm. and they have two. Um, they have two projects. Yeah, I, I, Christian did a great job of, of summarizing what our the review team three's like overall impression of it was, which was that it's really important work, but they're they're not reaching very far. So I don't think that I just pulled up their application. They don't do any workshops, and they aspire to reach um, four hundred. I think it was four hundred and fifty clients um, in a year, which is. Uh, on the low end of what I think a, a lot of other projects also submitted. Um, and yeah, they don't, they didn't have, um, it, it was, it was like a little short on details, especially with continuity planning. You know, they, I think they just said like, we'll, we'll look for other funding, but they didn't actually describe what they would do. Um, so I think it, this project met everyone's expectations, but it didn't, it didn't exceed in any of its categories. Yeah, I don't know why we should recommendation. Okay, I'll carry it over for now. I think there, these um, figures in red um, may impact our, our end total. Um, all right, so we'll, we'll, we'll maybe revisit. So the next one is the Domestic Violence Pro -Pro Project from Family Violence Law Center. Um, they're uh, seeking fourth year funding. Their funding priority was at three and they were below um, 70 points. Make sure I'm reading across the line correctly. Um, and because of that, um, staff recommendation was potentially a 15% um, decrease from what they were awarded in, in prior years. So that would bring them around um, 21,000. Um, their ask is 25,000. They're obviously getting a lot of other funding, right? Yes. Yeah, if, if, if it's 4% of their total budget. Um, yes. um, is the committee comfortable? I can bump it up to 21. 
um thousand just so it's not a, an odd number yeah. um okay i was just trying to be equitable in the percentages when we when um, we presented okay that's a 14 percent decrease um okay great so next is the ud um clinic expansion project from again a legal aid society of san diego um they're seeking fifth year funding uh, they have three, they did score better than the, the name change at 76. Um, and uh, primarily because they're seeking fifth year funding, um, staff recommendation was uh, potentially a 15% decrease from their 2021 award. Um, would the committee like to um, increase the staff recommendation um, given that it potentially, I think it is a stronger project than their last one, um, they did score higher. so. Um, they'll be covering housing um, issues in, in San Diego. So. The one thing that our, our review team really appreciated about this project was LASSD, Legal Aid Society of San Diego, went out of its way to describe the services they were going to be providing to low-income landlords and not just tenants. Yes. So their so, request amount is 80,000, staff recommendation is 67. Does the committee feel strongly to potentially um, increase that um, by a little bit or? Some increase seems appropriate. Uh, I'll throw out a number 70,000. Is there another like um, amount? Okay. <laughs> Great. So we, um, next is another unlawful detainer workshop seeking fifth year funding by uh, Community Legal Aid SoCal. Um, this project, because it was below that um, 70 point kind of threshold we were utilizing, um, we were recommending a 20% decrease from what they were funded last year. So the ask amount is um, 66,000, um, staff recommendation is 55,000. So I'm just curious as to whether it's a we now have two UD projects right in a row here. And one is one is rated what 76 and one is rated 67. Why? I mean, why do we think so much more highly of the one in San Diego than the one in Norwalk? Um, so I have the breakdown of the scores. Uh, if, if you'd like to see Eric, it, it's a very big spreadsheet. So I was just trying to keep it manageable. But I oh, think this will who was involved in reviewing the projects. Um, I know review team one um, did it. I don't have to have my, my notes in front of me for that particular project for CLA, CLA SoCal. I, I recall there being um, weak continuity planning because it was a, it is a continuing um, project. Uh, sorry. Um, Actually, Crystal, can you go ahead and unhide so that we can see the breakdown of the um, other yeah. scores? I think court involvement was um, meets, project impact was meets, um, admin was above, uh, so continuity planning, it was a, out of three. So I think um, the San Diego project maybe edged out in terms of port involvement and project impact because those were both um, those were both um, exceed expectations. Is that is that helpful to know, Eric? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Was, as a reviewer for the the San Diego one, but not the not the um, Norwalk one, we gave it an exceeds because they they aspire to provide um, services in four thousand like instances, 4,000 instances of individual services is what they have in their application. And um, we were, we thought that was impactful. Um, right, so staff recommendation on this one. Yeah. That's 55? Yes. Thank you. Great is the Orange County um, Courthouse Guardianship Clinic from a public, a public law center. Um, so they, they're seeking fifth year funding, again, below that 70 points, um, funding priority of three. Um, 
So the staff is recommending a 20% cut from what they were funded in 2021. Um, just to note, I know their total request amount is 60,000, but we did um, we did only award them uh, 40, 000, about 40,000 last year. So that's the number we're working off of for this project. And I wanna say this was similarly, continu continu continuity planning um, scoring uh, might've impacted this, this uh, specific project. Is the committee comfortable with carrying, um, moving forward the staff recommendation or would like to increase, increase that amount? I think it's okay. All right, next is Santa Clara's, um, Santa Clara University Alexander Law Center's Consumer Debt Clinic. Um, they are seeking fifth year funding. Um, their score was a, a 66, so again, below that 70 points. Um, so the staff recommendation was um, similarly a 20% cut from what they were awarded in 2021. So pausing here to see if the committee feels um, whether or not we should increase the staff recommendation for this project. So this is, we're the only funder for this program, correct? For Santa Clara, yes. And um, I think Santa Clara might be the only county project in that county. Hmm. Wow, really? There's no other Santa Clara County project? I'm gonna sort this. So I, so I can confirm. Doesn't surprise me. Yes, that's the only one. Why? For partnership. Isn't that surprise? Uh, I'm surprised. You know, they're, they're, they're just underrepresented. It's 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 really interesting. Um, but you know, you get some in San Mateo, and then it just trickles out. The the, the Central Coast starts at San Mateo County. I yeah, but <laughs> right, but Santa. I mean, Santa Clara is not that rich. I mean, it's got some rich folks in it as many counties do, but maybe they're have a higher percentage, but still I wouldn't think it would be so devoid. I mean, okay. Uh, um, this was one that we had reviewed. Uh, what, what's the, can you scroll over one more time um, just so I can see what the staff recommendation is? Oh, staff recommendation is right here. 47 out of the 60. Um, so there was a 20%. Um... Yeah. Oh, there. Sorry, I see it now. Um, move you. Yeah. So this uh, was, um, I believe this is a law school based yeah, this clinic. Is Santa Clara oh. University. And um, my recollection from our team's discussion, what we took particular note of was that um, this clinic meets um, only one day per week, it only meets in court on Wednesdays. It's gonna, it aspires to serve um, about 250 clients, which we thought was sort of on the low end. So it's like less than one client per business day. And um, the program will also do two workshops. Um, and we, we took note that given the, the scale of the work, it was seeking $60,000, which we thought looked too high compared to what other programs were asking for and what they planned to do. Um, the other note I had uh, I think we gave it a meets expectations on everything. Um, if I remember correctly, I'll pull it up. But um, the other note I had was that we noted the um, the attorney supervision was only 0 0.2 FTE. Um, and that for like a law school clinic, we thought maybe for a $60,000 budget, the attorney supervision needed to be higher. Maybe we can go back to them and ask them to explain why they need sixty thousand dollars with so little attorney supervision, and I'll pull up their application right now. It, it, um, in case the um, committee wants to like circle back later in the meeting, I'll see what they put in their their budget. I guess my only concern would be that if uh, would a twenty percent cut jeopardize the program if it were the only funder. And we could, we could also increase it slightly, maybe like 50,000. Um, I think one one thing for follow-up is um, we're gonna be sharing the tentative funding recommendations um, and getting feedback from the organizations in terms of you know how that would impact 
the proposed project. Um, so is 50,000 okay maybe to put as a, a placeholder for now or uh, does the community want to? Yeah, it's maybe, but Chris, are you pulling up the application? I'm curious as to what they're spending their money on. I do. Um, I, I have it in front of me. I can, um, Chris, if you want me to share my screen, I can share everyone. No, that's okay. can, Just tell us. So the, um, it is actually going um, almost entirely to personnel. So $51,634 is personnel. Um, it is um, the $23,000, which is the 0.2 FTE attorney. They have $11,500, I'm rounding, goes to paralegal and $2,683 to other staff. Their employee benefits are about 14,000. So this reminds me, we took note that because it was law school staff, the compensation was a, trended a bit higher than it does for legal aid nonprofit staff. I think the university gives, it's a more expensive like benefits and payroll tax uh, ratio. And, and we actually calculated what the person's annual salary would be at, at 0.2 FTE and took note that it was particularly um, um, high salary compared to what like a legal aid attorney would make, uh, but probably because it's a law school staff member. This is something I'm actually like putting together a memo about for the law school um, consideration, of the, for consideration of the rules committee about law schools. But it, it is just a, a, a reality right now for us that law schools tend to run more expensive than other projects. So it's mostly okay. personnel and a little bit of admin. Very much. <laughs> what was that, Sarah? I, I didn't hear the last statement. They're not paying their adjuncts very much, I'll tell you that. Their adjuncts? <laughs> oh, I see. Well, I'm, I'm fine going up to 50. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. I think we're in our last, our last few. Um, so next is the Caregivers and Small Estates Accessing Justice Legal Aid of San Bernardino. Um, they're seeking fifth year funding. Um, they did score below the, the 70 points, um, which is why SAF is recommending a 20% a decrease. Uh, we also did want to call out at San Bernardino as well, I, I believe. This may be the only apprenticeship grant project in, in that county um, as well. So I don't know if the staff uh, committee would like to increase the staff recommended, recommended amount. Um, they are requesting a pretty um, high amount at 138, um, but they were, they were awarded 98,000 last year. So kind of using that as a reference. <clears throat> I, I would support an increase in this one. I think it's a it's considered to be a pretty valuable project. So I think the increase was they're adding in a probate piece and it wasn't clear how much they really needed for that. So I'm not sure we need to take the increase that seriously, but I give them a little bit more. Great. Any 80, numbers come or... to my 80,000? That would, that would be an 18% decrease from what they were awarded in the prior year. Um, so we're at, we have about 234,000 left and one, two, five more projects. Um, so maybe Family Law Day of Court is a project from Legal Access Alameda. They're seeking six year funding. So this is a, a five plus year project. Um, they did score fairly well for um, at 75 points, um, but just taking into account the, the years funded um, staff recommendation was, was a 20%. Um, decrease from their prior year. They're requesting 30,000. So um, just wanted to check in to see if you wanted to maybe increase that or, or keep the staff recommendation, maybe round up to 24 or. <clears throat> About 25. Yeah, 25. 25, okay. So that takes them to 15%. Um, all right. Next is the guardianship project from uh, Central California Legal Services. I think these are um, Christina's co comments earlier regarding yes. this, this, this project. And this is reflected in their um, low rubric score of 55. So we weren't, uh, we weren't sure of the amount when staff made these recommendations as to um, 
I think we had a lower amount. So we were either proposing um, potentially not funding this project, like if, if the funding, you know, if the funding was limited um, or a, a fairly significant decrease, um, which would be 30% from what they were awarded um, last year. So their ask amount is 65,000 just for reference. Um, does the committee um, want to go with this offer combination or potentially maybe increase a little bit? I think there's a, there's a little bit of wiggle room given the, um, the balance and it is Fresno um, or, you know, like they, they did score one of the lowest for the rubric. And I don't know if that should also be reflected in the allocated amounts. Can we come back to that one? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> These are the top ones, that's why they're in red. Um, the next is the uh, Small Estates um, Partnership, and this was Riverside Legal Aid. Um, so this was actually the lowest score of the, of the, of the, whole, um, the whole applicant pool. They're 54, point, uh, 54 points. They're seeking seventh year funding. Um, so similar to CCLS, the staff recommendation was potentially a 30% cut from what they were awarded in the prior year. Um, <clears throat> or potentially not, not funding as well. So as you can see, their ask amount was 110. We gave them 98,000 last year. So it would be a significant, fairly significant decrease at um, about 70,000. Does anybody remember why they scored so low? Yeah, that, that, this was our group. And we, um, so wait a minute, Riverside. Yeah, so wait, is it, so this is small estates. Yes. So you, you say the substantive areas are conservatorship and guardianship. I actually thought it was just probate. I might have I'm not sure why you, why you would, would characterize it that way. And that was the that was the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not sure that that's correct on that on, on that spreadsheet. <clears throat> okay. Anyway, so to answer to answer the question, the focus was limited. Um, again, you know, I've heard the comment about the evaluations. They're probably weak across the board, I guess. But um, this one, it, it, it was hard to see that they were serving a lot of people, even if you go back to a pre-pandemic year. Um, but maybe it was just a poorly written application. I Maybe where they just don't have a great sort of grant writing staff. I don't know, but it just wasn't very impressive. But we did have some concerns that they're in Riverside and this is some indication that they were providing some level of valuable service. So I don't know, we weren't wild about it, but we were okay with funding it to some extent. Can we get clarification on whether it's just probate or they are providing additional services? Well, I think it is just probate. I mean, we can go back quickly to the application. Yeah. I, just, I just looked at the uh, profile sheet. It is just probate, but they do okay. serve three courthouses. Sorry, and it is Riverside. Um, you know, the service numbers this year uh, are already three times what they reported for all of last year, if that helps. Last year, they reported yeah. around 27 people served, which is really, I mean, even given the circumstances, you, you'd look for better than that. But yeah. uh, apparently this year, they're already up to more than 70 through April. So that is um, a positive sign. The court has implemented technology yeah. to make it easier for um, these services to be provided. And I think it might be facilitating uh, more people using it a little bit. The county um, self-help center has started providing uh, some forms assistance uh, and they're gonna be um, helping to funnel people to this service. So um, the way it's going to be working is uh, the attorney is present during the probate calendar and the self-represented probate calendar. And when someone shows up with notes and isn't able to follow through with whatever with whatever's happening that day, they'll just say, go to the breakout room. You've got a legal aid attorney to help you out today and um, come back when you've got it straightened out. What did they project as the annual number of people they'd be serving? I believe the number was 250 that they want to re, uh, reach. So they're but, they're on pace to be well ahead of that. You know, yeah. I think that uh, they're, they're they're on track for it. Well, there you said they're 
they're at 70 now? Yeah. Yeah, through April. So that'd be third of the year. Third of the year. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that right? Wait a minute. Wait. Yeah. Third of the year. Through April, not up to April. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and I'm going to, um, you know, sort of underscore what Eric said. This, I think, is um, a project that was not helped much by the way the application was written. Yeah, I'm looking at it. And I see that their funding priority was at two as well. Um, yeah. As, an, as another data point. So, I mean, I, I think a decrease is probably what the committee may want, but I don't know if it's 30% or slightly smaller than that. Maybe we give them 70, you know, just to round it off, um, but give them a substantial error. And, and And send them the message that we just weren't, we really weren't impressed with the application. We need to do a better job next year. Um, I have a, a friendly relationship with their executive director. And I think that that's a, a conversation I could have with her because this is not the first grants program where this issue has, I think, uh, <coughs> redounded to their detriment. Okay, great. Um, so the, the, the last two um, similarly situated is um, <clears throat> Legal Assistance for Seniors and Public Council. Um, they're both, I guess both guardianship projects um, Seeking 11th year and 13th year funding um, noted that the review teams noted funding priorities at two and um, both scores were below the 70 threshold. So um, keeping in mind uh, the staff recommendations, I think you're recommending a 25% um, decrease from what they were awarded in um, 2021. Uh, again, or potentially not funding, just depended on how much we had available. Um, I think guardianship clinic, you know, seeing that 15% um, would be partnership grant funds, they just seemed well, well funded, um, you know, with or without our monies. Um, but we, it looks like we do have um, some flexibility here to, to put funding their, their way, so. Any thoughts on um, staff recommendation of uh, the 25% um, decrease from their 2021 award? Oh, Eric, I don't know if you said something. I saw your mouth move. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so that's 48,000 and then 22,000. All right, so that leaves us about 69,000 um, revisiting um, the guardianship project for CCLS. Um, so put the 41 in there, I guess, because we've got it, right? Yeah, do, is there um, any thoughts of maybe increase or um, keeping, keeping that recommendation? Um, So with the 28574 remaining, are there higher scoring projects that the committee would like to full, more yeah. fully fund? That's a good idea. I'll sort this by largest to smallest. <clears throat> I'm gonna scroll down the zero, the new, new funded, I think we're confirmed on that, either fully funding or keeping to the maximum range of the 120. Um, San Luis Obispo, I think we were, <clears throat> The committee wanted to increase um, the staff recommendation to 105. They're requesting 115. Um, does the committee want to increase this amount anymore or? Uh, what was the innovation uh, points for on this one? San Luis Obispo, it's. Um, I think it was the, the rural considerations. Um, just so I'm checking who had that one. Was this ours? Yeah, it was your four, sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Let me look up my form. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay. Yola, we're ready, or Lesnick, we're ready funding. Um, why do you wanna, do we wanna look at the, the middle, kind of those 70 to 80 range projects to maybe see where we can distribute the additional 20? What if we try to top off all the small ones? Small in terms of asks. Oh, yeah, we can sort of that way too. Just an idea. Those are usually pretty, um, you know, economical projects. So domestic violence, um, yeah. family violence law center. Do you mean that they're getting a lot of bang for their buck? I mean that the budget. Sense? I mean the budgets usually don't have a lot of fat in them. You know, I don't know whether you get a lot of uh, service units per dollar, mm -hmm. but you know, when when there's only twenty five thousand dollars in the budget, they usually don't have a lot, you know, for like extra technology and weird stuff. It's usually just paying for staff. Except they've got other money. Yeah, they this this project is very well funded. <laughs> um, Four percent being partnership grant funds. I, I wouldn't necessarily know if the community wants to put more money this way or maybe one that. Do you want to maybe sort by the percentage of partnership grant funds? Like if, if you can look at those higher amounts and see how those kind of <clears throat> consumer debt clinic. Um, I was hundred percent, but we did, you know, raise, raise some of those issues um, and it is seeking fifth year funding. Um, YOLO, I think we're fully funding um, for meeting mm -hmm. their request amount. Uh, yeah. Riverside. If any of the committee members had something that was particularly fit that category of seed funding or related to unlock level detainers, given the the current situation, where we could make sure that we we fill any holes, if any of the committee members had or staff had any uh, point wanted to point us in the direction there. Uh, in terms of substantive areas, well, yes. Okay, so let me let me start let me start that way too. Um just so we can take a muffled detainer would be or housing, yeah. Look for any big cuts, I don't know. That looks pretty good. Eh? I don't know if you want to maybe oh. increase um, CLA SoCal's UD Norwalk, maybe to 60,000, um, just because it, it will be housing. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. that, that score. Does that sound okay? Yeah, I think so. That's a 13% cut. Um, do you want to look maybe geographically to see where the monies are, are being distributed? So we have 23,000 <laughs> to spend. Um, any maybe thoughts? Maybe we should look geographically and look at the rural areas. Yeah. Alameda, Imperial County, I know was one, and we increased their ask to 71,000. Do you want to? And increase potentially increase that to a little bit more or or keep keep that recommendation i wouldn't mind giving them their 74 that they asked for the committee yes yes okay all right i'm going to just scroll down if anyone can uh call out any okay this is getting full funding um San Keen, oh, also getting there, the, the top of the range. What about, um, what, yeah. um, San Bernardino, the Consumer Rights Clinic, that's, oh, okay, that's five, okay. What's the one that's 15%, 18% uh, decrease? That was the, the caregivers, caregivers and small estates. Um,
you potentially want to give more um, allocate more monies to to that project. Um, yeah, that's a good one. It's an 18. Um, Currently, it's an eighteen percent cut. Uh, their ask is is one thirty eight. So I don't know if you want to go a little uh, bit higher. Oh, eighty five or something like that. Yeah, eighty two. I think I think I heard Eric said eighty five or eighty two. Yeah. And then just going back to San Luis Obispo, I know we they were requesting one fifteen, and we said one one oh five, um, and they scored fairly high as well. Do we maybe want to increase that to like 110 and see where where we are at the bottom and the balance? Yeah, because they're just second year, right? Yes. Okay, 10,000. <laughs> I wish I had this problem with my own money. <laughs> <laughs> um, Santa Barbara scored a 70. They're the only one in Santa Barbara. We, we were granting them. 109, do we want to give a little bit more money just because that's the only project there? Or any thoughts? <laughs> um, on the, and we've we already discussed this one, but the small estates uh, Riverside probate, because we were 100% of the funding, I think we were going to go talk to them before we considered any additional bump there. Was that my understanding? No, I think we were going to give them this, but talk to them about it next year. I mean, we could give them a little bit more, I guess, if we wanted to. More in terms of like 75 or like 80 well, I, mean, they were, I don't know. I, I wouldn't, I mean, they, they didn't make a real impressive applications. That wouldn't be my first priority. Right. Yeah, I, I agree with that. That was just one where I saw a big cut. even from last year's allocation, but they, they need to get it together. Yeah. <laughs> so keeping that at the 70, maybe, so, yes. um, okay. I'm just trying to think how else we can sort it to, to figure out another way to spend down this this $10,000. Uh, the rest of the, the differences or the percentage yeah, cut? This they, one? I mean, just out of curiosity, could this money be used to support the um, uh, the outreach or webinar, whatever we want to try to do uh, for um, evaluation. I don't think maybe so. Cost so these no. <laughs> so the largest um, decreases was the guardianship project, um, small estates part Riverside as well. Um, is there any thought to maybe increasing guardianship project by a little bit more um, or keeping it it's hard. I mean, I think, okay, <laughs> let's just see other ones. 20% um, consumer debt clinic or Orange County uh, Courthouse Guardianship Clinic was 20%. Vermont Pro Save, I think that's that's 20 just because of the, the funding, um, the funding um, top of the range. Partnership to assist guardianship litigants was a 25% decrease. Um, do, does the committee want to bump up any of these numbers or should I move a little bit up uh, higher up in the list to see? I mean, it looks like some of these were, were have low, uh, higher percentages of, or there were, they were, the recommendations are lower because the quality of the proposals were lower. So mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense to bump those up. So maybe, yeah, look, look higher on the list. Okay. Do you want to maybe bump this up to thirty six thousand? We can round up the projects with uh, like a, yes. ending with a five hundred. Okay. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's see. Which so one was that take, now? We'll take them up to um. So JDC <laughs> um will be bumped up um to thirty six thousand. We're gonna just round up to the nearest thousand and see where what happens. Forty seven thousand for the de facto and adoptive parent assistance. Um, 61,000 for the Family Law Settlement Conference. Okay. Um, 32,000 for the Orange County Courthouse Guardianship Clinic. Okay, we're at 8,000. 
let's see where can we at? go back to the santa barbara project yes because I, I do feel like that's a um an area that doesn't have um you know where legal aid of santa barbara is you know what one, one of i think two legal aid programs that serve that area and it seems like they're doing where, where is it i know sorry I'm gonna oh i see it it's line 23 i think yes thank you They asked for 125. 125. We gave them one about 115 last year. And I think that. Would, would the committee be comfortable going? Do we have enough to give them 115 again this year? Yes. We do. Yes, is that a yes? So we have 2,000 left. Are there any more stray 500s? I know, I'm lucky as well. About the San Diego UD project that we thought was so great. Um, I'm going to go through San Diego. So they added 11% cut. They oh. were given. Should we give them the balance? Yeah. Um, so Elizabeth, just double checking. Will, will there be like one or a few projects with like an odd amount just so we can expend all of the funds that's fine so, so it can be or just put them all in there yeah Ooh. okay so i will sort this by um how does it can you want it maybe we can do it by largest to smallest and we just confirm that everyone's the committee's comfortable with these tentative funding recommendations so the top, uh, the projects that would receive the most funding is our, the newer project, the newest projects, um, which is Bethsaidic's uh, Decedents of State Self-Help Clinic and the Remote Pro Se Technology Initiative at 120. Oh, also including Sierra LA's San Joaquin Housing Helpline at 120. Um, and then 115 for Santa Barbara's Legal Resource Center Partnership, San Luis Obispo at 110 for their rental clinic. Um, 108 for the uh, Senior Citizens Legal Services Indigent Tenant um, Landlord Tenant Services. I'm going to hide the staff recommendation for now. Oh, that didn't help. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to view all of <laughs> uh, Maybe maybe you can hide the substantive areas. Okay. For right now. Yes. Good idea. <clears throat> Oh, yeah. All right, and then neighborhood legal services, stabilizing families, um, 100,000 San Diego volunteer lawyer program for their central division restraining order clinic, um, 93,000 community legal aid SoCal's Compton self-help economic expansion project at 92,000 neighborhood legal services Chatsworth, 90,000 inland county legal services consumer rights clinic, 88,000 legal aid um, society of San Bernardino, 85,000. Um, Lafla's Torrance Self-Help Center, 84,000. Um, NLS Pasadena Continuum Services, 81,000. Um, LACPA Council for Justice, 80,000. Uh, Legal Aid of Marin Homelessness Prevention through um, MSCs, 80,000. Um, Legal Aid Societies, Name Change and Gender Marker Change Self-Help Clinic, 75,000. Um, Elder Law and Advocacy, Imperial County Unlawful Detainer Clinic, 74,000. Um, Legal Aid Society of San Diego, um, 72,574. <laughs> um, <laughs> Riverside Legal Aid uh, Small Estates Partnership at 70,000. CCLS Tulare County um, UD Workshop, 70,000. Um, Lisnick's YOLO Consumer Clinic, 67,000. Legal Access Alameda Family Law Settlement Conference at 61,000. Legal Assistance for Seniors uh, Partnership to assist Look Limited conservatorship litigants, 60,000. CCLS's Tenant Landlord Housing Law Project at 60,000. Uh, Community Legal Aid SoCal um, um, UD Workshop at Norwalk, 60,000. Santa Clara University Alexander Law Center Consumer Debt Clinic, 50,000. Um, legal Assistance for Seniors, a partnership to assist guardianship litigants at 48,000. Um, Public Law Center's de facto and adoptive parent assistance project, uh, 47,000. CCLS Guardianship Project at 41,000. Uh, JDC's Shriver Sash Self-Help Clinic at 
36,000, public law centers, um, Orange County Courthouse Guardianship Clinic at 32,000, Legal Access Alameda, Family Law Day of Court at um, 25,000, CLA SoCal's Orange County Consumer Debt Workshop slash Clinic, 23,000, um, Public Council Guardianship Clinic, um, 22,000, and then rounding off the allocations, Family Violence Law Center um, 20 at 21,000. Confirming that the committee is okay with this tentative, um, tentative spread um, and seeing if there's any follow-up questions um, or any information we'd like to relate to the um, applicants uh, following this meeting. And, and we did discuss that I would be contacting the executive director at Riverside Legal Aid to talk about grant writing generally. Um, I think I believe we'll also be sharing the um, rubric scores as well as um, some of the feedback from the review teams um, during this follow-up to share like the funding recommendations and um, their, their scores as well. So, <clears throat> could you yeah. start by uh, funding priority again, really quickly? I'm just yeah. curious if we we gave everybody a similar haircut on funding priority generally. Yeah. So these are all the twenties. Um, the larger haircuts are primarily because of those were the newer projects. Um, right. And then Lesnick, they're they're funded, so they're actually above eight percent um, than what we gave them. So that's why that looks funky there. Well, why are there percentages in there on the difference when there's? So this was um, the new projects actually in uh, in relation to their um, their ask amount. Everyone oh. else is related to their um, twenty twenty one allocation. Okay. Well, did you still want me to scroll down? Yeah, just a little bit. Thank you. Yeah. Hmm. It, it looks like we were pretty consistent, especially when it comes to taking into account the rubric score, it looks like. OK. I think we started from a place of, of absolute consistency, and then we made reasoned variations from that when it was appropriate. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> we have numbers on the board. Uh, I mentioned the follow-up that we'll do with the applicants. Just wanted to know if the, any committee members had any um, questions or, or concerns. Yes. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, Chris or, or Judge Jaskell, if um, now having seen the other funding priorities, if you felt your it was still pretty in line, the applicants that you had reviewed didn't have any concerns now. Not not quite sure what what you mean. Um, you mean the 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 fact that uh, I gave mostly threes. Yeah, that was that was my understanding that you were. There was a desire to see what the other priorities were before really committing. Um, no, I mean, in, given what I understood to be what would be required to go above three, uh, I, I still feel comfortable with with my scores. Cool. All right. That I just wanted to double check that since um, I know consistency is difficult when it's a whole bunch of different people working to to try and figure this out on the rubric. All right, thanks. I'm, I'm good, thank you. Great. Um, I think another thing we'll um, try to incorporate in the RFP next year is um, some of these sample responses that kind of um, exceeded um, expectations just for applicants. I know that was one thing we wanted to have, but we, we didn't necessarily have, um, you know, if we, if we do kind of utilize a rubric uh, again for the review process. So we have that information. Um, yeah, Christine, is there anything else um, that we need to kind of learn more? I don't think so. Um, so what's next? I think we need to vote on whether or not these are approved. Oh, these the, these don't rec um, actually because they're tentative recommendations. They don't require um, a committee a committee vote. Um, that's really? that's at the June 18 meeting. So okay. Oh, all because, right. Because staff still needs to follow up and to assure that you know these tentative recommendations, the grantees are able to do something with them and that sort of thing. Excellent. I, I actually have a vote tally sheet for this, but um, we're going to leave it blank. 
you the next time. Mm -hmm. um, Elizabeth, I, I didn't follow what you said. What, what are we going to do with these tentative recommendations? Are you saying staff staff's following up with all the grantees if there are you know any outstanding questions that were raised today or by the working groups? Um, and then you know if if the amounts are lower than what the ask is, just confirming that you know they will be, be still be able to move forward with the project given mm -hmm. the uh, the um, funding recommendations. Sounds good. And yeah, I think that was the bulk of our, our meeting um, today, what we were supposed to accomplish. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to end at four, so I'm glad we're, we're very early um, and we're able to come to a, a agreement with, um, with the tentative funding recommendations. Um, I didn't have any, I don't think there's anything else for the agenda. <laughs> Will we be getting the response from the projects prior to the meeting? Yes, Did prior to the that? June prior to the June 18 meeting, I will I will be in contact. Well, and Justice Maria, I know there's a, a couple of follow up questions um, that that you both had, so um, I'll I'll be in touch that um, you know after this meeting and then prior to the to the June 18 meeting. And then at that meeting, if adjustments are needed, that's when we would uh, make them. Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure you got it. Yeah. Okay. Good. It's actually very helpful that staff went through and did yeah. this provisional sort, um, really saved us. It was very helpful to do that. So good job. Thank you. Well it's a great job by staff. You're here. Great. Yeah, we weren't sure how the systematic approach would take, but I think it, it helped provide like a, a talking point and then finding other reasons why, why granting additional funding and you know how to, how to weight it. So. Uh, I'm glad the committee was receptive to to staff's recommendations. I'm going to stop sharing my screen then. <laughs> yeah. We're all just mesmerized by everything <laughs> in that thing. So many columns. <laughs> okay. Um, is there any other business we need to take care of today? I I was just curious um, because it's all fresh in our mind. The rubric piece. Should we, do we have any um, evaluation form on the, the rubric already ready or should we just take our own personal notes and then save them for that process later in the year? Yeah, so that's a good question. So I actually had um, our next meeting to do a debrief because that's when we're coming up with the final recommendations. If you have notes now, um, what I wanna do is um, pull, pull the committee up. I probably might make a survey or, or some sort of um, form or something just to get the feedback and, and your thoughts, um, you know, by, by like early next week, just because you said it's still fresh too, so. <laughs> yeah, my uh, dad brain has not been great lately, so I'm trying to do things <laughs> as it's in my, my head and fresh, so thank it you. It sounds like the evaluation piece is really gonna be very important. How, do you guys have thoughts about how that's gonna work? Because I guess if, we're, if, we're, if we're gonna have meaningful evaluations this year, um, I guess we have to get something going pretty quickly, right? In that regard, we we have had discussions with you know Melanie and Bonnie at the Judicial Council um, to to work on the evaluation um, forms that that uh, grantees fill out, um, and and so we have made some small changes in the past, but I think for I think we're planning to meet with um, uh, them in June yeah. to review the twenty twenty evaluations. Um, and then make some further recommendations and work together to figure out how to how to improve that. So that it, it is on our to-do list. Is that, a, is that a public meeting? I mean, could I, I mean, actually I wouldn't, would you mind if a commissioner yeah. or two participated in yeah, that? Of course, of course we did have, I believe Deborah Myers participate um, last year. Yes. Um, and so, um, yeah, it is not a public meeting. It's just a meeting staff to staff, you know, um, state bar staff with judicial council staff, but um, you know, we, we would welcome your participation. And I think Bonnie might have, some thoughts? I just wanted to say, yeah, I think we were also thinking it might be helpful to do some uh, training session or something mm -hmm. like that for after reviewing the, the um, evaluations that we could, you know, might be helpful for everyone to have a little bit of training and guidance. And there were some great evaluations. So it would be nice to be able to kind of um, note how people did those. So that was, I think, but yeah, we'll, we'll get together and, and talk in June about that. Bonnie, did you have anything else um, kind of in response to the committee's Senate of funding recommendations or thoughts of this year's applicant pool? 
No, I thought I thought it was there were some great new applicants, and um, and I really do appreciate State Bar staff's work in uh, pulling together the recommendations. This is the shortest partnership grant meeting that I've seen in uh, <laughs> twenty years. Twenty years. <laughs> I think Yours it was that, really yeah. helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to echo Eric's sentiments on the evaluations as well. Um, that piece measuring the how the public is actually responding and how many people are able to get the assistance that they seek is really important to me. I really thought it was deficient as in the applications that I reviewed and I hope that piece is um, emphasized in whatever is going forward. I'm, I'm glad to contribute because whether it's sending text message surveys or web surveys or whatever, especially for people who aren't able to get to the end um, to try and evaluate how much we're doing our, how much this program helps to increase access to justice as the, you know, 6121 says, or 6021. You know, the, 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 the Judicial Council has been working really diligently for a couple of years at least on um, improving evaluation at self-help centers. And I think the goal is for us to coordinate what we're doing with what they're doing so that um, information is uh, more comprehensive. We can make more cross-platform comparisons, but the process is sort of gonna take its shape from what happens with the Judicial Council. So we are really trying to coordinate and making sure that we do, we step the same way they're stepping. That makes sense. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to discuss before we adjourn? Right at 12.02, not 4 p.m. Great job, staff. <laughs> Okay, then I guess we'll see everybody back on Ju June 18th. Okay, Thank you, everyone. We're adjourned. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Have a good day. Nice weekend. Now that we got it back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> really excited for this. I go to the park. Thanks, Christina. Thank you. Very, very good. Thank you.